Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In the headlines this week, we've got a paper detailing reports of orcas harassing and killing porpoises, a new sauropod dinosaur named from Spain, a 6 million year old turtle fossil with potential DNA preservation and much, much more. Starting off the news this week, a paper published in the journal Marine Mammal Science has documented and analysed 78 instances of the endangered southern residence orcas harassing porpoises between 1962 and 2020. This population of killer whales live off the west coast of North America and comprises three different pods, all of which have been observed interacting with porpoises in this way. Of these 78 encounters, 28 of them resulted in the death of the porpoises, referred to as phocenocide by the authors, since porpoises are members of the family Phocenidae. This is very interesting behaviour, as the southern residents are exclusively fish eaters and mainly feed on Chinook salmon, and so none of the porpoises they interacted with were consumed. The behaviours displayed by the orcas vary, but they often include pushing porpoises with their snouts, holding them in their mouths, balancing the porpoises above the water on their heads, and even allowing the porpoises to escape before catching them again. The orcas have also been observed ramming and tossing the porpoises, as well as slapping them with their tails and raking them with their teeth. The behaviour also seems to have been passed on from one pod to the other, since members of the L pod were the first to be seen interacting with the porpoises, and then later on this behaviour was seen in members of the J and K pods. The reasons for these behaviours is currently unclear, but the various hypotheses are offered by the researchers, including that they are practising hunting or maybe even attempting to care for these smaller cetaceans in the instances when they were seemingly trying to keep the porpoises above the water. It's a fascinating paper that just shows how complex and capable of learning these highly sociable animals are. We've got more whale news next, as a recently published paper has revealed that humpback whales like to engage in a form of behaviour called kelping. The whales like to put kelp on their heads and roll around in it. They also like to move around with their huge pectoral fins. Scientists believe that the kelp feels soft and pleasant against their skin and may help them to shed parasites and bacteria that colonise their huge bodies. So basically, a spa day for whales. (laughs) The whales also have highly sensitive hairs along their jaws and around their heads that may be stimulated when they brush against the kelp. The humpback whales also have been observed to bite down on the kelp and pull it underwater and then let it go. This is unusual as they don't have teeth, they are baleen whales, so it is not natural behaviour for them to bite something. It's possible that the kelp scrubs the inside of their mouths, and it's not just kelp that they like, they will go for any type of seaweed. Single humpbacks have been seen to leave a pod to go and have a rub with the seaweed and sometimes this behaviour has been observed with several humpbacks together. It may be that the behaviour is a form of play and they are enhancing learning and strengthening social ties and basically just having a good time. First up in the paleontology news for this week, we have the naming of a new dinosaur species. Called Garumba Titan morelensis, it comes from the early Cretaceous of Spain and is a new kind of titanosauriform sauropod. Quite a lot of the skeleton of this dinosaur has been uncovered and the remains of three different individuals were found at the site. Much of the vertebral column is preserved, as well as most of the hind limbs and various other elements. The characteristics of the bones indicate that this was an early branching member of the Somphospondylin lineage within Titanosauriforms. Interestingly, Garumba Titan adds to the complexity of the sauropod fauna known from the Iberian Peninsula at this time during the Cretaceous period. Some of the sauropods from this time and place have affinities with the ancient northern land mass of Laurasia, while different ones are related to sauropods from the southern landmass of Gondwana, so it seems that there were some complex faunal exchanges of sauropods happening between different continents in the early Cretaceous, and Garumba Titan expands the known diversity of these dinosaurs even further. Also in the news, the first example of a trilobite with preserved gut contents has been published. This specimen of extinct arthropod was found in 465 million year old rocks in the Czech Republic and is three-dimensionally preserved in a nodule and using synchrotron microtomography, paleontologists have been able to get a look at what it had been eating when it died. The gut contents are very tightly packed and almost continuous along the whole length and are mostly made up of many tiny fragments of calcareous shells 
from tiny invertebrates including ostracods, bivalves and echinoderms, suggesting that this trilobite was feeding pretty intensively, most likely scavenging along the sea floor. The fact that there is also no evidence of dissolution of the shells indicates that the intestine had a new neutral or alkaline environment and probably contained digestive enzymes similar to those in modern day crustaceans. Up next, a new species of mosasaur has also been named this week, called Halesaurus hebe. It is based on disarticulated pieces of the skull and lower jaw, plus a few vertebrae, and was found in rocks dating to the very end of the Cretaceous period in Egypt. It's found to be a close relative of the already named Halesaurus aramborgi, known from Morocco, and Halesaurus platyspondylus from the US, and like these other species, was a relatively small mosasaur. Halosaurus hebe, along with a few other halosauri mosasaurs, also had quite large and forward-directed orbits, suggesting a particular reliance on vision, and possibly indicating that these mosasaurs were specialised for nocturnal hunting. Also in the paleontology news, a study has looked at the feeding biomechanics of tyrannosauroids to see how the relative bite forces of these dinosaurs evolved over time. The paper not only looks at T. rex itself, but also a variety of its relatives, including some early diversion tyrannosauroids that were much smaller. Looking at the performances of the cranial bones during feeding in small, medium-sized and large tyrannosauroids, as well as younger individuals of the more derived later tyrannosaurines, they found that the broad-skulled tyrannosaurines such as T-Rex, Daspletosaurus and others had much higher jaw muscle forces compared to the similarly sized tyrannosauroids that diverged earlier, such as Gorgosaurus. The large but relatively basal tyrannosauroid Euteranus also had lower cranial stresses during feeding than most adults of the more derived tyrannosauroids, suggesting that the skulls of these large tyrannosauroids were able to cope with the larger stresses induced by greater bite forces, but did not notably decrease the stress on the bones. They also found that juvenile derived tyrannosaurines actually experienced greater cranial stresses than earlier tyrannosauroids of similar sizes showing that even in juveniles of T-Rex and other late Tyrannosaurus, the jaw-closing muscle forces were greater in their more ancient relatives, even though these juveniles had less robust skulls. The paper therefore provides some amazing insight into how the tyrant dinosaurs evolved such powerful bites, and how the different members of the Tyrannosauroid superfamily fed in different ways. Also in the news this week, there has been a paper reporting on a partial turtle fossil from Panama that may contain possible traces of ancient DNA. This specimen comprises a part of the carapace and is actually the oldest known fossil of the genus Lepidocellus, which is the same genus that the still living Kemp's Ridley turtle belongs to. The fossil is 6 million years old and shows some exceptional preservation of the bone microstructure. Taking a closer look at the microstructure, the paleontologists found that the blood vessels, collagen fibres and a type of bone cell were all preserved. Some of these bone cells even show circular structures inside them that resemble the nucleus, and a kind of histochemical stain was used on the structures to show that they react to this staining and therefore may contain remnants of DNA. This would be the only the third instance of DNA being preserved for millions of years in a fossil, as it's been reported in a couple of dinosaurs too, and it's particularly interesting that it's occurred in a low latitude tropical environment. This discovery therefore might show that the preservation of ancient DNA is more likely in tropical regions than previously thought, as well as expanding the known record of ancient DNA preservation as a whole. And finally for the news this week, we also have an amazing study reporting on the first footprints to have been made by terror birds. These trackways were found in Patagonia and date to around 8 million years ago, and they are named as a new kind of ichnotaxon. The terror birds, members of the family Forest Rachidae, have always been assumed to have been functionally tridactyl, meaning they walked on three large main toes. These new footprints have revealed something somewhat surprising though. They show that these birds were actually functionally didactyl, with only digits 3 and 4 mainly contacting the ground, while digit 2 was reduced and only the base of it and the tip of the claw touch the ground. This is a clear indication of an adaption to fast running, similar to what we see in modern ostriches, which are also didactyl and absolutely terrifying. <laughs> 
It also shows that the long claw of digit two seems to have been kept raised up and was therefore likely used to pin prey, very similar to the famous killing claws of dromaeosaurid dinosaurs. I said dromaeosaurid correct. <laughs> that's it for the news this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened and we'll see you next time.